Hi, this is Greg from Structural Toolkit. In this video, we are going through a steel cleat plate connection design for a PFC connected to a steel SHS column. A cleat plate design can be done by using the cleat plate module from the desktop. This module will check the bolts, cleat and welds, along with consideration of the supported members web if the cleat is connected to a hollow section. The design methods used follow the web side plate design model from the AISC Design of Structural Connections Green Book and also the side plate design from the Design of Structural Steel Hollow Section Connections, which we will refer to as the Blue Book. The two methods, although presented slightly differently, follow almost the same model and design checks, being in accordance with AS4100 steel structures. It's worth noting here that there is a newer design guide published by ASI that covers website plate connection design. The guide follows a similar approach to the green and blue book and includes other design checks on the supporting members, along with cleat block shear. For your typical design, these additional checks would not be critical, however you should make yourself aware of these. The cleat plate model is intended as a flexible connection and so falls under a beam connection in simple construction where the cleat connection to the supported member does not develop any moment and is able to rotate. That being said, there is a moment applied by the cleat to the supporting column due to the eccentricity of the vertical shear force applied. This component is also incorporated into the connection design checks. Unlike the rigid end plate design that we did a video on previously, 4.6, 8.8 or 10.9 snug type bolts are the preference with 8.8 TF or TB bolts not recommended. Before we get into the design, we also need to mention that the cleat design module in Toolkit only permits one vertical line of bolts. Refer to the green book for guidance where more lines are to be used. The example we will be using in this video will be a continuation of our steel column video. In that video, we designed a 89 by 3.5 SHS steel column that supported a simply supported 250 PFC for a residential house. We've imported the PFC design into our project here by using the import feature from the document tab. Using the reaction from this design, we'll use the click design module to design the connection for our PFC to column. So we'll first start by opening up the cleat design module. And to begin with, we can select our supported member, being a 250 PFC. The first input we have is our design shear force. This will be our member's reaction, so we'll go over to the design. And we can see we have an ultimate reaction of 31.1 kN. So we'll take that and input it into our cleat design. The actual design force used for the module is based on the maximum of our input force and then the minimum of 0.15 times the design shear capacity of the supported member and 40 kN. This comes from clause 9.1.4b of AS4100, being for connections to beams in simple construction. In our case, our 250 PFC has a 5 VVM of 345.6 kN, as we can see over to the right, so our design force will be set to 40 kN, being higher than our force input. As our connection will be inside the wall of a house, it won't be in a corrosive environment. Next we have our cleat inputs. We'll start off with a typical 10mm thickness with a yield strength of 250 MPa. Grade 300 plate is also an option, but grade 250 can be more readily available, so we'll go with that for now. Next is our eccentricity, which is from the center line of our bolts to the face of the column. This will affect our plate shear moment and also our weld design, and so we don't want it to be too large. But we also need to keep in mind that the eccentricity needs to be sufficient such that the rotation of the beam doesn't cause it to touch the column. The Green Book also suggests that a rotation of less than 0.02 radians should be achieved in order to remain within the design model assumptions. This equates to 1.146 degrees, and as an example for a 250 PFC, 
is 2.5 millimeters displacement at each flange. And with a span of 4.8 meters, a mid span deflection of 30 millimeters or span on 160. The centricity input will include the side edge distance of the member itself, so it will need to be more than that. A typical value is 20 millimeters plus the edge distance to the bolt column, which for a 20 millimeter bolt is 1.5 times the diameter plus 20 millimeters, which equals 55. So we'll leave that as default. Our top and side edge distances are limited by clause 9.5.2, being 1.5 times our bolt diameter. This means for M20 bolts, our minimum edge distance is 35 millimeters. Note that these inputs will automatically update based on the selected bolt as a default to some standard distances. Next is then our bolts. We'll start with two M20s for now, being a standard selection for a 250 PFC connection. And we'll have them be grade 4.6 snug tightened bolts. Being the most commonly used grade in this situation, our hole oversize will be 2mm, which accommodates tolerances in the plate and beam, along with allowing some rotation of the beam itself. We then have our bolt spacing, which is limited by clause 9.5.1, being 2.5 times the bolt diameter. There are also maximum spacing requirements from clause 9.5.3. For a M20 bolt, a typically adopted spacing is 70 millimeters, a distance that has also been adopted in the examples of both the green and blue book. So we'll also go with this value. Next we have our welds. A typically adopted weld thickness for a connection like this is six millimeters. However, it is important to consider what exactly we are welding to. AS4100 does not explicitly state a maximum weld thickness, other than when along an edge, but simply states that the weld need not exceed the thickness of the thinner part joint. However, a common rule of thumb is to ensure this is always the case, which in our case is our column thickness of 3.5 millimeters. As an interesting side note, AS5100.6, being the bridge design steel and composite construction code, has slightly different wording for a similar clause where it states that the size of the weld shall not be greater than the thickness of the thinner part joint. You will find varying advice on weld thickness depending on which resource you look at, and so you will need to decide for yourself what is both practical and appropriate. In our case, we'll then select 4mm for our weld thickness and see how we go. Next we then have our members section. For our supported member, we have our side edge distance being a minimum of 1.5 times our bolt diameter, similar to the cleat side edge distance above. We'll keep this as the recommended 35 millimeters as well. Our beam will be uncoped, so we'll leave both of these values as zero. If your beam is coped, then there are a few extra design checks performed on the coped section, ranging from member bending and the cope and block shear. Next is our supporting column, as ours is a hollow section, we'll tick this on as yes. This will then incorporate checks specific to the blue book that apply to hollow sections. Our column grade is 350 with a tensile strength of 430 MPa. Some typical values of other grades can be found in the notes over to the right. Our supporting flange thickness is then 3.5 millimeters. With all our inputs complete, we can move down to our design checks. The first check is for our cleat thickness. This check comes only from the blue book and so is only applied to hollow sections. Effectively, what it does is limits the cleat thickness to ensure that the cleat yields before punching shear failure of the column face. We can see already that our cleat is too thick and if we scroll up, the module is telling us to reduce the thickness to six millimeters. So we'll do just that. And providing it works as a six millimeter plate, we can still use 10 millimeters for our actual connection. Next, we have our shear capacity check for our cleat, which comprises of the bearing of the bolts, vertical and horizontal tear out of the bolts, the cleat shear capacity and also cleat moment capacity. 
These checks are part of both the green and blue books, just represented slightly differently. One key difference, however, is that the green book also considers bearing and tear out of the bolts through the supported members web, with the blue book only looking at the cleat. The moment check is just a rearrangement of the standard bending capacity formula, converting back into a shear force based on the connection's eccentricity. With all these different capacities calculated, the minimum is taken as the capacity for the design, which we can see down here to be 47.9. Next we have the cope check, which in our case only contains the shear capacity of our full section. After that is then the bolt check, which includes the bolt formula present in AS4100. This capacity is then multiplied by a ZB factor, which refers to the effective number of bolts loaded in vertical shear. Refer to the green book for further details on the derivation of this formula. As this module only deals with a single line of bolts, only this ZB is applicable. Another thing to note is that for grade 10.9 bolts, there is an extra ductility factor applied, being KRD, to the bolt capacity formula from AS4100. Finally, we have our weld design, which includes the weld capacity from AS4100 clause 9.6.3.10. In order to take into account the combined forces of shear and moment acting on the weld, both the green and blue book provide an additional formula that resolves these forces into a single formula that the design shear must be less than. The derivation of this formula can be found in the commentary of the green book. So with all our design checks covered, we can scroll back to the top to our summary. We can see that our connection takes our design forces comfortably. Doing this level of design for each connection in your project is likely excessive, and instead you may want to develop some standardized designs for each beam size. For example, two M20 bolts with a 10mm cleat may be a standardized design for all your 250 PFCs. Though with that being said, you will always need to have some consideration of the actual load you are dealing with, as you don't want a situation where your reaction exceeds your standardized design. That about covers all you need to know for designing a steel cleat plate connection in Structural Toolkit. Feel free to check out our website and our other videos for more tutorials and help with using this software. If you have any questions, please contact our support team via email or by calling us. Thanks for watching. Thank you.